Graham Gartland here at the Hellfire Club. Welcome to Clear the Head. Each week we'll be talking to a member of Shamrock Rovers Football Club, going for a walk through their life and their journey. First of all, thanks for coming up, JC. Well, uh, no pleasure. I got to know you later on when I was starting out my career, so Indeed. it's great to actually have you here. Yeah, delighted to be here. Um, Happy birthday, first of all. <laughs> yeah. We won't, we won't well, mention take, the age, no. but whatever age no. you are, you look great. Oh, thanks very much. <laughs> Don't look bad yourself. Uh, no. uh, we'll touch on this later, okay? <laughs> yeah. We'll carry that. Right. Um, you're synonymous with Rovers. You're a massive Rovers fan. Yeah. Where are you from originally, and where did the Rovers thing or, uh, originate from then? Uh, as well, well, originally from uh, Grove Park in Ratmines. Oh, uh, right. a, uh, a Rovers stronghold, obviously. Yeah. It's a hop, skip and a jump from Milltown. Um, my two elder brothers, Tommy and Joe, were huge Rover supporters in the 60s, followed Rovers here, there and everywhere throughout the country. So it kind of was just a natural progression that you follow what your, uh, your older brothers did. Um, all the, basically all my f friends on the street, lots of uh, football in the street, all Rover supporters apart from a couple of renegades. And the, you know, <laughs> yeah. They had that, even then, that started to come in, that League of Ireland. Yeah. We follow, we follow Chelsea and we follow Spurs and what, stuff. What time around that was? That was about, <laughs> about 1966, 67. It's around the time Match of the Day was there. Yeah, kicking, more or less, yeah. yeah. Well, we had Match of the Day and then that other programme on the Sunday afternoon. Yeah. Um, that they, they loved watching that. Yeah. Well, we, was, myself and most of my friends would still venture up to Milltown of a Sunday. And at that time, Rovers were a really successful team. They... Um, they were winning the six cups in a row at the time. Yeah. And we thought this was just normal and service. Were houses at Milltown at the oh, time? Oh, absolutely yeah. rampacked. You yeah. couldn't get into a cup match in Milltown. I remember one time going up and being stuck up against the wall like this. <laughs> and you look like a kid, like yeah, just hanging, yeah. looking over the fence. And all you could see was the feet because the camber, and you couldn't yeah. see the other side of the pitch then either because the camber of the pitch in Milltown. So you're like this, and some fellow squashed and up against it. was all waves of terraces, was it? Absolutely. Yeah. So yeah. huge, huge crowds. Um, fantastic times. So. And I met you have a big family, do you? Or? Yeah, uh, I've, uh, I've three brothers and I had two sisters. Unfortunately, one of them passed away. Right. And but uh, yeah, I have another sister, Lily, as well. So she. And you were the pal. youngest, way you were the yeah. baby. I was the baby, the family spoiled rotten. I oh, have yeah. to say, yeah. hands up. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> one hand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, uh, and w sorry, was that difficult? And your sister passed away. Was it recent, or was it? Something yeah, well, it was difficult in the scenario that uh, my mother had passed away six months earlier. Oh. so it was a kind of a double whammy. Yeah, um, I was very close to my mum. Uh, she had a huge influence on everything we did, basically. Yeah, really. Life. Yeah, yeah, everything, yeah, and that includes football as well. Seriously? Like, yeah, it's like buying the boots and getting you ready and all that stuff. You know, but she pushed you more so. Than no, it? she didn't really push, but. She was always supportive, you know. Yeah. And it was funny eventually when I did break into the Rovers team and became successful. It was very strange because I'd come home on Sunday evening from Limerick or Cork or Galway yeah. or whatever. And, I, and then she, the first thing she asked me, how would you just get on? Yeah. I said, we won. And we used to have the radio playing yeah. in the background, just like the Sunday sports. Yeah. So she knew exactly what happened. But she always Show wanted, it, your Exactly, on it. yeah. And would your dad have been as much of an influence then? No, not at all. Dad passed away. Very early, I, I was only 12 when he passed oh. away. So it wasn't really an influence at all. So your brothers would have took up a big mantle Absolutely. for you there, would Huge. You? Yeah. Huge. And would you owe them a lot then in terms of your football? Um. Even even introduced you to Rovers originally, but then also after your father passed away, would they have taken up that role a little bit between them? Or? I think my older brother Tommy definitely tried to, but uh, I was at a certain age then, I was coming into like 12, 13, 14, yeah. quite renegade <laughs> yeah. kind of stuff. Still are. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it's, uh, it's hard to control, so I was kind of drifting out and in and out of football at the time. Not getting into any real bad habits yeah. or trouble or anything, but just, just being lazy as regards that. And I, there was nobody there really to say, well look, okay. you have a talent, yeah. I need you to come. Uh, to come and play or come and train, or yeah. so I was a bit rudderless at, at that stage. But well, you would be when you lose your father, yeah, I yeah, suppose. for sure, yeah. yeah, yeah. And where did you end up starting playing football then? Well, I started early, I did start when I was about 10, and the youngest then was uh, was under 12s. So I started up in Bushy with Leicester Celtic, all right. Uh, Mick Flaherty was the manager, but uh, you know, when you were 10. 
and the lads are playing against our 12. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it was just mesmerizing. I like, geez, this is the land of the giants. Like. Yeah. So it's kind of it took it me time. And then it came back and when I was 12, came back to Leicester yeah. then. And then just everything was normal and away we went. We had a good, decent side. We were way down the leagues though. We weren't like a bell or a home farmer. Yeah. So we were in 12k. Were they, were they in clubs quite prevalent back then as well? Oh, they were huge, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. Home farm was still the place to go. I yeah. remember uh, a buddy of mine went across when we got to kind of 16, 17. Yeah. I remember him saying to me, he's a very clever fella. He said, Sean, you'll never get to play for the underage teams, play for Leicester. Yeah. You have to go to home farm and you have to go to, the, well not Belvo, Kevin's maybe so much. Yeah. And he was right. Stella Mar as well, big exactly. as well. And you're yeah. in the, the line, boy. Yeah. So, I never bought him the arse, but yeah. he went over. He made it go over, but he didn't have any success. And would you him. think, would the football give you focus then at that age, obviously with, the, with your father passing away, would that be something you then concentrated oh, on? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, I was so lucky to have it. Because it just took me more. Actually, the week after he died, actually, it was brilliant. Because Leicester used to run these trips to, uh, to Wales, to North yeah. Wales, to play a match. And then they bring you off to Old Trafford or somewhere. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I remember the, about a week after the funeral, I was totally confused, didn't know what was yeah. going on. And uh, so, I remember my older brother saying, well, look, John, go off to Wales, enjoy yeah. yourself, have a great time, and we'll talk about everything when you come back. All right. So that was great, yeah, it was great. A cleared ahead moment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> great plug, yeah. brilliant. <laughs> but see, that's something I've known you a long time, and it's something I didn't know. Yeah. Because you have such a bubbly persona around the place. So then, what was your journey from uh, Leicester to, to Rovers? What was the in-between bits? Yeah, as it was uh, kind of lost me way a little bit when, when I was about 13 or 14. Um, just not playing. And as I was saying, um, yeah, friend, Declan Whelan, a friend of mine, uh, his father used to call down to me to play for the CYC, the local kind of youth yeah. council team on a Sunday morning and actually used to go out and get like bags and bags of goals because yeah. we made them front at the yeah, time. Right. So we scoring goals for fun and that actually gave me a, a graph for it again. Yeah. Just the, the feeling, you know, yeah. you know the feeling. It's yeah. hard to explain to people. It is. Just that love you have for the game. It's just magnificent. And so then I uh, actually uh, joined uh, Pat's for a while. Pat's Schoolboys, ah. a friend of my brother's used to run a very successful Pat's Schoolboy team. Did they have Schoolboys back then? They did, yeah. yeah. They had a very successful uh, uh, schoolboy team, um, very good players, excellent players, better than I'd played with yeah. previously. And so, um, yeah, so I, have, I spent a couple of years there. And funny enough, I got my own represent, my only representative team I got selected for the Dublin schoolboys under right. 15s or okay. something at the time. So I was saying, well, let's do this. You know, true, how right ready I was. Yeah. You have to be with certain clubs if you want to get any chance of being rep of representing. I think they judge it off who you're playing against as well and who well, you're playing with. That, you know, he scored 50 goals, but he's done it yeah. against an international centre back. They, they brought you in. Con Flanagan was the manager and brought you in, and they had a trial match. Yeah. So. It's, it's a bit strange just yeah. to bring it down to one game. I remember I Fran Gavin was, uh, Fran, was, on, yeah. was on the same team. He's yeah. on the same era as me. So yeah, that was that was a lovely, that was a good time. It was a successful time. We won quite a few uh, trophies at them. But then I just, I don't know, I didn't just didn't like the setup of Pats. Things happened and so uh, we eventually went to Rangers then. Uh, in Bushy turn, Park. Yeah, 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 yeah. Turn Rangers. And uh, played under 17s and under 18s there with um, Oh, great man, Noel Quinn. Okay. Absolute sweetheart of a man. And so with those two, I mean, again, quite and a And were you still side. playing up front? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah well, goals yeah. Got I'm not <laughs> goals left foot side. That left foot. Oh, it's, it's funny, because we, we were talking earlier, uh, we done Cuzzo, we done Tony Cousins, another obviously yes, yes. person you know well, and we've done so many players now where they go, now I started as that, yeah, yeah, I started yeah. as this, base, and you're it? going like, yeah. Tony started as a centre back, yeah. and I'm looking at Tony like going, you weren't the centre back, and he goes, no, I was this size, I, <laughs> yeah. was it, I played for Ireland as a centre back, he played no, 14s, 15s, for sorry, he said 15s I was, around 15s or 16s, but he said he played, and I was going, looking at him going, how like and he's gone oh, I was this size and I was like, all right so but it's interesting that you've gone as a striker yeah. to then go and play behind the yeah, ball yeah and when did you transition to that then well that's that's another story but <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah so uh, got to 18s left nowhere to go but a load of my mates were playing for the YMCA down in Sandy Mount in the Leinster Senior League the Saturday League yeah and uh, and they said I remember uh, Damien Morden 
the fella, he was the centre forward at the time, but he was the fella who knew us from the area. And he said to myself and a couple of my pals who had played on the Rangers team, he said, well, come on down, he said, to the YM. Yeah. Great facility, and they had the great, age, a beautiful yeah. pitch. They had great facilities. And he said, it's a brilliant learning curve for when you go on to the League of Ireland. Right. Like, he was just thought yeah. it was a natural progression for him, in his eyes, that we were go- that not all of us yeah. were going to go. So as it happened, uh, I was the only one who actually made it in the end. But So I went down, had two, probably the happiest years of my life at the yeah. YMCA. It was and were you working class. at the time? Yeah, I just got into the post office. Had you? Yeah. 1980, I got into the Postman's post elbow. <laughs> <laughs> Possibly. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I just uh, got into the job. I was playing with all my mates. You know, sat, of course, yeah. sat with the deliberately Saturday football. Yeah, they, yeah. You know yourself. I do. So, uh, 20 years of age. But it, f- f- as it happens, we used to drink in the 51 in Haddington Road, about the gang of us yeah. in the back bar. And uh, one of the lads there was a huge Rover supporter. Absolutely huge. And so he said, uh, one of these days, he said, will you come up? Oh, I've talked to Noel Campbell, who was the B team manager at the time. Yeah. <laughs> How are you? How are you? Is okay? You all right? All right. Okay. Yeah, he said, he talked to Noel Campbell, and he knows you're coming up. So up I went on it. Thrown out the car at the gates. Yeah. In you go. They're not expecting you. Yeah. <laughs> So that was the start of it then, went in for, pre- for pre-season then. What year was this? About 1981, I'd say it was. Right, 81? Yeah. yeah. And you were just after your 18, you said? Uh, no, 21 it 21? was. 21? Yeah. Jesus. Yeah, it was late coming to, this, yeah. to the show. Yeah. So I went in and actually by April I was in the first time. Oh, seriously? Yeah, it was amazing. Absolutely, yeah. the following April, it was yeah. September, say. And, then and how was it? How did you adapt? Well, what did you use? What? How did you get to go it's from? Hard work. Yeah, was it? And then, nothing else. And did you start? Did they start moving you back then? No. No, you were no, still as you went the, in as a striker. Went in as a winger, yeah, winger, Le- striker. Yeah. yeah. Um, Jonesy had me in. Johnny was obviously the manager. At the so time. Johnny was the manager. Yeah. And how did that go? What was your first meeting like with him? Oh, it's brilliant. He's was class. it? He's just yeah. class. He's just. There's no airs or graces about him. He's just. Yeah. He's just a complete gent. Yeah. He's just, Fabulous. And were you trying to go full time at, at that stage? Um, I don't know. It, it was in, always in the in the background. You were t- yeah. like he had all the kids in, like here on Mar and uh, Gaffo and all those yeah, lads. Yeah. Like they were the, the the new young hopefuls. Yeah. But uh, he tried. I think he tried. But he couldn't manage. The crowds had disappeared. Had no, he? Yeah, nobody was coming to the matches. Why, this why was that then? Considering what you said earlier about the yeah. how like you pushed to the I wall to be- go from that to that. Yeah, because I think. Um, uh, TV football had yeah. just come in and it absolutely decimated the crowds. Sunday afternoons, it was it like you had to walk up against the ITV game or something yeah, back exactly, then as well? Yeah. yeah, the Sunday match or whatever yeah. it was at the time. And plus the fact Rovers were, were basically were great now. Where is not now? No. Weren't great. Weren't great. Although we did get into the uh, UEFA Cup. And what was his training know? like, George? It's funny, it was basically. I don't, you, you wouldn't remember, but when you walked in the big green gates in Milltown, it was a car park, like. Yeah. And so we um, basically put two goals up, yeah. did a bit of run around the pitch, and then played football for the rest of the night. Yeah. Now, it was a decent game. And he game. joined in all the time, Oh, he did, he? yeah. He's class. Was he? Yeah. Was he that good? Oh, he was class, I remember, even at that age. Yeah, like, I remember yeah. speaking to a bit. He's an old manager, own hand. I was yes, sharing a flight with yeah. him. Owen used to do all the European delegate stuff. So we were going away, and I, G and H ended up beside each other. Right, yeah. And I said to him, "Was just that good? Like somebody that it's always intrigued me. My dad was a Leeds fan. And right, loved yeah, him. yeah, yeah. I was saying, was that good? Like, and he goes, Graham. Like he says, we were on our way to Brazil, and he says, and like we were panicking. He says, and then we were like, it's okay. We've got Giles. Like <laughs> he says, but he's like we were like playing Brazil. Like yeah, he's like yeah, yeah. he said that was okay, just a, yeah, <laughs> exactly. That was just the belief he gave everybody. Yeah, like I, I think he was the one that gave the belief to all the players going. He had the same effect on the players. Like even a young lad coming in, a raw young lad, he made me believe that I was playing for the best club in the world yeah. and going to play with the best team in the world. Yeah. And it was just easy. It just made everything so easy. And he take you aside and he give you little little hints. Now, yeah. don't, don't go in there. Don't right. Go in there. You might just wait your turn. You might even go a bit late. Yeah, you yeah. You liked a little bit of nasty. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. So he loved all that. So he, he was, was teaching you the other side of the exactly, game as well. Exactly. That's hugely important yeah. for longevity. That's hugely oh, important. Oh yeah, you don't want to get done. Yeah. So we um yeah so we. Quit. And then breaking in, how? Oh, it's unreal. It, it, 
comes to me one day and he says, uh, he says, uh, yeah, we want you out to uh, UCD on Sunday. Oh, well, really? yeah. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. I remember a funny story about that. <laughs> so I remember um, because of I'm a city boy, of course, yeah. all the number 11 goes to UCD. I right. know that for a fact. <laughs> yeah. You see all the students on yeah. it. Like, not realising it's a Sunday. Yeah. So it doesn't go to the no. university. It goes, it goes to Donnybrook Gage. Oh, right. <laughs> so I'm with the gear bag, <laughs> walking up Donnybrook Road. Oh, jeez, this is a hike and a half. Oh, like right. a, bit of pre, a bit of pre-match. Is, this, this is ridiculous. But looking up, Ronnie Murphy pulled in. He said, you saw where you, did you, did you go? <laughs> so he gave me a lift right to the ground. It was, it was mad stuff. But that's where we're laughing at it now. Like, yeah. But oh, like the, lad, the lads are giving out about flying into, into <laughs> like different airports. <laughs> like, and you realise the, yeah. the difference of where it started. started like. Exactly, exactly. Because I was, I was talking about the, the Giles thing the other day, going... He tried to create the first ever professional team, not yeah. just not just football yeah, team, yeah. any team oh, in he? Ireland. Oh, did he? Yeah. Because there's, like all the gay, all the Gaelic teams are amateur. Oh, Everyone right. else yes, is amateur. Yes, that's right. So and the like, rugby lads were amateur. Oh, yeah, yeah, everybody. So he's tried yeah. to create the mo- the first ever professional, professional team, team. It, it, sports it, team. It, yeah, yeah, in yeah. Ireland, and I'm thinking that's mind blowing at that time. Oh, he was you so know? he was he was so far ahead of it in everything yeah. he did, like. But his football, particularly, he was brilliant. Was well, yeah. I'd say it was just for a kid, just being around. It was just just extraordinary. Yeah. Yeah. And breaking in, then how did you? Once you got in, w- did you settle quickly? I did, did you? I, well, I scored two on my debut, which was just unbelievable. <laughs> it was great. He looked his bloke the world. That's I have yeah, to say. Yeah. Oh, well, you make your own in this <laughs> game. So. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I know. Huge amounts of luck. Yeah. But having said that. You're, there, you're in the right place, though. I worked my yeah, balls off yeah. to get there. Yeah. I remember in training sessions, like he'd have you playing, play one up front, and like like uh, Brad's are now, you play out from the back, yeah. play it out there, to, or you play it in there into the midfield to go wide to the yeah, full back, yeah. and then carry on from there. So I was the lackey who had to do the, the, the doggies room. between yeah. the two yeah. centre halves, basically. Yeah. And I did it willingly, and I did it every single training like, yeah. for six months. But that's Do the what, same thing, same thing. And then you get your reward, some old stupid centre half. Yeah. You have a dodgy ball, you intercept it. Thanks very much. Oh, yeah, that's right silly them the centre backs. <laughs> yeah. And so then yeah, you've 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 you unbelievable success at Rovers in terms of oh, when you come in. Extraordinary. Yeah. So that's another good story. So um the season finishes and um so the transition in Giles is gone. And oh. how was that when Giles left? What like what, was, what were the what was the reasons around it that you knew as players? Uh, not, well, I didn't know much because, you know, the yeah. youngsters are always the last to know yeah. anything that's going on. It was just that there was no success. Uh, I think um, uh, not so much Louis, but Barton and Paddy Kilcoyne were kind of saying, well, look, yeah. we're either going to get a reward f- from the team or we're just going to bleed. I think okay. it was probably in their heads at that time even that yeah. the new team would be on its way. And they didn't want, maybe Giles didn't want to be associated with it either. Possibly. Well, Giles is... Uh, I think he's Louis's brother-in-law. Oh, yeah. So, so Louis, you never know what's going on. He just on. walked away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't blame him either. Yeah. But um, yeah, and then the announcement was made. Jim McLaughlin's the new manager of Rovers. Now I wasn't really close with anybody at Rovers. Look, I didn't get a phone call from the players or yeah, that. You know, yeah. I kind of did my own thing. So I was kind of left in limbo. I didn't know what to do. And again, my friend Martin Nolan, the fellow who brought me up initially. So he had a shop in town. I remember calling into him. I was working in uh, Sheriff Street. Oh, right. And I walked up to O'Connell Street, or Henry Street, where he had a shop. I went in, and Martin says, uh, did you ring them? I made him wrong. Yeah, so, yeah. So I said, no, we didn't. Who would I be ringing? So he said, right. And he goes to the phone in the <laughs> office. Boom, 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 boom. Rings. There, it's ringing. Yeah. Oh, God, I hate the phone. Yeah. That's the time. So I ring, the phone answers. Hello, Shamrock Rovers. I said, uh, hello, is that Jim McLaughlin? And it go, yes, he says. <laughs> He's answering the phones as well. How lucky are you? Oh, How lucky are you? <laughs> so I said, uh, yeah, well, my name is John Cody, and that's as far as I got. He says, John, the very man, we have yeah. no number for you here. Oh, right. He went on and on and on, a big So he'd been trying to get you? Well, he said he was, but he yeah. wasn't. I don't oh, well. and I'm sure he, I believe him. But um, yeah, so he said, John, get up here training on Tuesday. We need you. Right. So up we went, and uh, the rest they say is history. Although what happened was then he bought Kevin, uh, Kevin Brady for a left full yeah. for balls. Right. Um, and unfortunately, Kevin got a, a groin, I think, a groin injury, a bad one, like a Gilmore groin yeah, or something. Yeah. 
so it was a particularly bad one but he, he broke down a couple of times trying to come back and so eventually they said to me did you ever play left back oh tons of times <laughs> <laughs> like the, yeah absolutely and you have to yeah, you have, have to stick out of the team you know they only won sub back yeah, then yeah, as well that's right. right like you know yeah. well, I think we developed two subs at that stage yeah. Gareth it's not sorry really but <laughs> so, no subs <laughs> <laughs> yeah broken ankles yeah, and playing with yeah. <laughs> yeah, so they said, uh, King Ireland himself came to me and said, did you play left? So we started, I started off, I remember a League Cup match in uh, in Harold's Cross against Shells. Oh, it couldn't have gotten better. It was just like, Jesus, this is, this is like, Keith is playing said, oh, oh, he's a little bit, you go yeah. in behind me, he says, I'll break yeah. our bleeding neck. Right. So you didn't even have to worry about the offside yeah. aspect, he had all that in hand. Yeah. So, oh, it was class, everything in front of you. Yeah. That's the difference, isn't easy, it? Yeah. Easy Japanese. Yeah. <laughs> and was it just like did you have to work on that defensively or one v ones? How connected you were to your centre no. back? Or was just one thing you I had did, enough pace, did you? Everything just never. Nobody. McLaughlin said, "Don't dive in. Nobody's going past you. Yeah. Nobody's going to outrun you." Yeah. So one thing he did do a terrible habit from throw ins when the opposition had a, that boy was American. We just come bundled into the back of the ball because I know it didn't. You don't want to do it. See. Now yeah. We, that's exactly. Yeah. yeah. So I was giving away free kick after free kick, right. stupidly. Yeah. I said, John, just stand there. He's terrified you're going to kill him. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you could go through people as yeah, well. Of course, yeah. in those days. So yeah. the throw used to come and then you just have a free header. Yeah. And that was it. That was the end of it. And how was McLaughlin? Because he's got un like, unbelievable success, four in a row. Three doubles. Like, yeah. Almost four doubles, like unbelievable. Was it just a great time? It was brilliant. At the, but I didn't. Re, you don't realise it yeah. at the time. Do you know that? Yeah. You, you've won a couple of cups and stuff, but you don't realise the history you're making or yeah. what you're doing or how how important it is, even for yourself. It's it, it's. I just think, kind of went yeah. over my head. You think, ah, this is like. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This is this this happens all the time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But it doesn't. No. Like you think of all the players who went through that league. I've seen brilliant players yeah. playing against them, and like. One little, I know, like maybe I won a yeah. league here, a cup there, but we were just churning them out for fun. And I still think if Viltown hadn't have gone, we could have been there for another few yeah, years. Like. Yeah, But um, that's the way things are. And when, where does the Chelsea move come about, and in what part of the. Yeah, the, it's, the it's extraordinary. So we, we, we. How many leagues did you won at this stage? I'd won uh, three and a half. Three and a half. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we're into December, uh, December 86. I just met my wife Angie in April of that year, so she wasn't my wife then. Obviously, so we were just going out together. So it was a hard decision. We she had was to on make. the post run, was she? One of those <laughs> kept delivering letters. No. <laughs> <laughs> so um, um, yeah, we played uh, in the Olympic match against. We were in a group with France, Hungary, and Spain. I think for the Olympics, the Olympic qualifiers. Was that another young team or was it just an amateur team that they done? Like no, well we were allowed because we were only we were semi pro yeah, at the time, so okay. we were allowed to enter the Olympic Games. Right. Yeah, and they had all their their army guys. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you just battered them. No, we didn't. Our no. no, we did not. No, we did not. Hungarians are brilliant. Where did so, <laughs> Three we, cheers for the Hungarians. We, we took the we took the lead. <laughs> we took the lead against them and the place erupted. We played the mill mill town right. and. Um, yeah, I think uh, was it Mick Bourne or Mick Bennett scored one of them, and uh, so uh, eventually they came back and they won the match two one. So I remember seeing Macker uh, McLaughlin then had moved already. Keeley was the manager of Rovers at the time, and McLaughlin had moved up to Derry, That's but he was the manager of the the Olympic team. Right. And, uh, he not said, a not a stroke. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so he um, he says to me, I said, "See you, Jim. All the best." And he says, "Oh, John." He says, "I've just sold you to Chelsea." He says. And gets in the car and drives off. I went, what? Oh, yeah, yeah, whatever. Yeah, that's, Mc, that's McLaughlin for you. Yeah. So then, funny enough, a week later, uh, Dermot calls down to the house. What? <laughs> <laughs> he never calls down no. to the He says, yeah, they've come in with an offer, they want to sign you. So I had a chat with, uh, with Angie, I had a chat with Ma. Kind of had to make a decision as to what, where the future was going to go. So I decided to, like, this is the reason you play football is to try highest and play level. at the yeah. top at the highest level you can yeah and offers don't come like like loads of people play football but not many people are offered the chance yeah and especially at 26 like yeah. it's just ridiculously late so um 
so bait, my hands were tied really I had to give it a go you have to, away. Yeah. Yeah. you'd regret it if you did yeah and you could get a career break out of the job as well yeah. which was fantastic so you always had that to fall back on if things didn't go to plan yeah. and as it turns out lucky enough it, but things didn't go to plan so I how long were you at Chelsea then I went in December 86 and I came back to Derry in uh, September 88 it's almost two years yeah it was it was great when John Hollands was there it was fantastic because he's the fellow you know they're, they're, yeah you know yourself going away like oh. the manager signed you is just I, he loves you yeah. <laughs> oh yeah and then a new face comes See, in. I, like I yeah it's not even a and this is what you're saying it's not even a luck thing it's like I went to the UK and uh, 2000 like by by the following summer they'd gone through two managers yeah yeah and then by that christmas there was a third one in yeah and you're sitting going and the first two actually got on really well with me right and the last fella comes in and he's like just not sure and yeah, i'm like yeah. all right like but that's the t- that's the look you've, yeah it's like you're saying two out of three like you yeah. and you're like i'm doing all right well, there. you did very well like, <laughs> yeah you know tell you, you. the fellow the next fellow came in after holland's hated me did he? <laughs> oh, he just gave you a total blank and london was strange back oh, then as well was it was weird was it there's no there's no lonelier place there's no lonelier place than than uh, london when you're uh, when you're not when things aren't going yeah. well like it's brilliant a great town and all when uh when everything is going great but uh yeah oh, i couldn't get out of there quick enough yes it is just, yeah. i got anywhere i kept hearing like rumors of it you know the usual rumor mill oh you might be going here and you might be going there but there was no real con- I and did you play at the start you, you got into the force team oh, and you I went did, over yeah, yeah yeah i went over in december it was the old bowl wasn't it you used to have cars yeah, parked yeah, down yeah, it was the like street the old, yeah uh, gray Elm track yeah that's it. right yeah yeah it was it was a uh, it wasn't a great pitch now no. i have to say the new stand was magnificent i have to say yeah that is one good thing but yeah um yeah it didn't take me long like, i think i went in december and I t- oh, they were playing tottenham actually on new year on new year's day yeah and uh they were I definitely they were thinking about throwing me in for right. sure and I don't know why they changed their minds but that's what it would have been better for me if they did just yeah. throw me in yeah because that's the way I am I need that confidence of being in the team yeah. and you know I'm not a fella you can shout at because I just won't listen yeah I'm more of an arm around the shoulders type yeah. of fella so in yeah fairness, you were like that as a coach when we worked with you <laughs> I, no I, and I mean that like me Obviously, I was talking to a good friend of mine, Sean Dillon, oh, and I was oh, talking yes, to him, and yeah, we were saying about that type of approach with us was great. Like, we just loved it. We used to just sit and chat to you about yeah, Chelsea. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah, what, yeah. <laughs> what was it like? And, yeah. yeah, you know what I mean? King's got, Road and all. And then you've got your own opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant to see his blossom on that. Yeah. So, yeah. like, that's where we were just delighted to be around. Yeah. Like, he played in the foreign row team. Like, you, yeah. you just, that type of, even just being around, it was great. But it's funny you don't even you're not really stop playing yeah. that you look back and everybody's going on about the fall and I'm, you can do on lads yeah but then you realize what you actually did yeah it's like extraordinary stuff really yeah it's just it was just mind-boggling yeah although if Bradford keeps it up like yeah I'm you, like you can win the league this year but that's it <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah, like getting a bit need, too close for comfort. We need to, we need to keep our status yeah. as unbelievable kings of Ireland. Obviously, McLaughlin really. You, but you went to the Olympics then in '88, did you? Uh, no. I thought there was. What did someone said about your the Seoul Olympics was. No. Was no. that just a qualifying thing for yeah, you? Yeah, I was. I was already gone at that stage. All ah, right. And um, so the lads had to trip out to Korea. Right. But uh, I did, it wasn't for anything. It was just a. a Dodgy friendly. <laughs> was it, so, yeah. Yeah. so uh, yeah, so no, I wasn't. Invo- they weren't involved. They didn't Ma- make it in the end, which is unfortunate, really. So McLaughlin comes back in to take you to Derry. Oh yeah, met him in uh, Swansea. They were playing Swansea, they were playing in Wales. Yeah, I think it was Swansea. In the was must have been the Cup Winners Cup or something yeah. at the time, whatever it was. So he went from London, went down to meet them. Agreed, because I was so desperate. Agreed in ten minutes, I'd say. Yeah. Just where do I sign? Just get me over here. And then the dirty thing explodes. It's just, <laughs> again, I don't know. And how harshly were you treated before you went that oh, you just... ostracised. Seriously, yeah. yeah. Training with the, uh, with the youth team. Like, just totally uh, soul-destroying, demoralising. Yeah. Like, and then the, what, the, the first team had finished training, and then the, the resis had finished training, and then 
course the U team are out till yeah. dawn and dusk, but no call or anything, just left there to Yeah. Just now was And never, who would you have torn to then? Like I know like it, anybody Yeah, because really you else. couldn't like yeah, you, you, there's no phones. Own. You're like you you're, you're having exactly. to ring like you're trying to ring Angie, but she's probably yeah. in a house going, yeah. but she doesn't might have a house phone either, like, you know? <laughs> I thought there was phones. Well, no, but you know what but I mean? I, I like, do know what you yeah, mean. We, yeah. There wasn't anybody. Like, yeah. They're just kind of totally isolated. Now, lucky enough, the people I was living with, I was in Diggs down in uh, Rains Park, and uh, the people like, were just sensational. Yeah. She was brilliant, uh, a kid. Uh, do you think it made much. you stronger then, like mentally? I think so, think? yeah. Well, whatever doesn't kill you, they yeah. say, it makes you stronger. So, yeah. I'm, um, but, um, yeah, and then coming back and you have a big fee and for League of Ireland standards yeah. and then the dirty expectation is absolutely joined oh, yeah. us. And you think I think I'm doing playing really well and we're winning matches. And McLaughlin pulls you in and he's like, Oh good job, you need to get back to I go, oh, Jesus, what do you do? Yeah, you know, yeah. so you're, it's a bit confusing in many regards. Now obviously in the hindsight he wanted to just bazoom. Yeah. McLaughlin all out attack, all out attack yeah. where it was more looking to play because yeah. of the last two years experience I've yeah, had yeah. So you became like a, a passing fullback yeah, instead yeah, of a bombing exactly, fullback yeah just passing and he's passing 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 but uh, look we want to treble I know and the, but the the biggest thing about that and we had a great documentary on it yeah was, was the, just the travel in France he brought it was like it was like we get to go and support this yeah. all over the country it's oh, was it yeah I remember the uh, the second match in was the League Cup final at Oriel Park, <laughs> and I think it brought eleven thousand people to the back. <laughs> and we thought that time then we're thinking, oh well, this is the start of the, the yeah the boom the boom oh. for the League of Ireland yeah because you know the way people see crowds they just wanted to be part of it and join in, and it just and we were that season everywhere we went there was a, there was eleven thousand at home matches that were bringing the FAI Cup final that year was it just it must be 25,000 dirty people at the thing it was extraordinary it was unreal it was like a throwback to the 60s yeah. when you see them packed into the rafters into Daily Mount and Park. it did it boosted the league for a good while oh, it, it, it got a great a yeah. great boost out of it but it didn't seem to just as usual didn't carry through and that was so disappointing as well nobody put that in around it to keep yeah, exactly. it exactly yeah that's the but thing it's like no structure yeah it was just oh this is great you know the FEI yeah. as usual not to, not, not to criticise the ah, FEI ah you can but um, they had a great opportunity yeah. there to build the whole league and on the rise like they really lifted all boats we were the same in two, like in 2000s we were the same that you're like you have you have all these travelling fans from Cork and there they were flying as well and we got obviously draw it but like Longford at the time there was loads of provincial clubs that were bringing people and you're like just put an infrastructure around Absolutely. this and help it yeah. and it'll, it'll stay but I think again the grounds yeah I know no, that's what I'm saying to you that's yeah. what I'm getting to like yeah the like, infrastructure yeah like yeah. draw this ground was the same yeah like when you played in it when I played it's in still it. the same and it's still the same yeah. and you're Oriel like, Park hasn't correct. changed at all yeah so you're yeah. like that's what you're talking about. You have a yeah. chance, and all the success that, and all the money in the country the in the two thousands, yeah, in the booms, yeah, yeah. And but they were just, yeah. And the, how the how the government aren't saying, oh well, listen, how the government aren't saying to developers, right? You can have this land, but you need to develop a stadium exactly. or a, or a, a, for a venue, community, exactly. Yeah. So that, that's a great focal point, as Tala has proven beyond measure, oh. how important it is and to that, have a focal point in the community. Like you're you're a Rovers diehard, and I, 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 people say to me, I, "What about you?" And I go, "It's more of a Tala thing for me, yeah, because." Yeah. Of, of all and the you're kids, you're hugely proud of where you're from. It's yeah, I, can say I was. You, yeah, yeah I, I, I wore it like as in yeah, like not yeah, an, in a chip like. Yeah, in, oh, what no, you mean? absolutely. But it helped yeah. you in so oh, many ways. Carried me like. And but, I remember talking to you about this and uh, when when we were at Longford together, and you were even saying at that time how proud you were to be from Tala and stuff. Yeah. And you're saying, that, that's brilliant. Yeah. It? and it works. Yeah, uh, yeah, it. and that and that. So when I see like European football, a Champions League football, and Tala, yeah. I'm delighted. Yeah, I'm like. This is here, yeah, this and is you imagine town. a yeah, and you imagine a kid seeing that going, oh. and then the kid that wants to be successful can associate going. Well, if they can do it, I, I can, can do, do it. it. Yeah, that small little. But you, that's another thing I'm absolutely amazed with is the amount of young yeah. kids at the matches. It's brilliant in the south stand. Yeah, I know. I, I get tickets for my kids, <laughs> yeah. so I go. I got fifteen tickets for the a group of a team. Or I get eighteen yeah, for the team, yeah, yeah, and they yeah. go, no, no, I don't need any, and I go, well, you're not going. They go, no, no, I'm in the south stand. <laughs> right. That's what they, they tell me. Little Leon's like, no, I'm in the south stand. I'm like, Leon's from Fingless, <laughs> lunatic. I'm going, ah, oh, don't, don't get in trouble, Leon. Like, but like, brilliant. Like, it is you know? brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. It's right. How long did you have at Derry? I had a good few seasons at Derry. Yeah, four seasons there. Um, oh, huge commitment because every game 
bar the Dublin matches are yeah. away. And did you away. move up to play? No, or? no, no. I, I, I trained with Shelburne, with Pat Bourne, was running Shells. Ah, right. So he. You're um, still close to Pat, aren't oh, you? Oh, hugely, yeah. He's a gentleman. Oh, he's just the best. Yeah. Himself and Mick are just fabulous. Would he be one of the best players you played with? Uh, Other than Joyles, obviously. Yeah, well. Giles, he didn't play much. He used to join in the training sessions when I got there. He wasn't yeah. really playing. But well, Pat was by far the best player I played with here. Yeah. By far. Just on a different, like. Yeah. A bit like when we played that Hungarian team. <laughs> yeah. Lajos, yeah. Lajos de Tari. Oh, I, I watched the video back on him the other day. Was he that good? Five yeah. moves ahead of you. Oh, yeah. like before the boy even gets the ball, <laughs> yeah. he already knows where it's going and where it's going after that. Yeah. We, we were joking earlier, going. Like you, you actually go, are we playing the same game here? Exactly. Yeah. Well, do you ever think, I try to think about it, say, what actually makes him I know. better? I know, I don't. And, 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 it's and awareness. Because, yeah, yeah, and because you, can, you can't say what it is. Like it's nothing to do with ability. No. We all have ability yeah. to a certain degree. But well, what's the point of for? <laughs> <laughs> but the mind, Yeah. it's just in the mind. Yeah, it, it is. No, and again, it's how we learn to problem solve maybe as a yeah, footballer, yeah. as a young kid. Yeah. That, like he's learned how to work things out quicker in his head, but was he, he that good? He was yeah. Was he? Yeah. Was he one of the best you played against oh, then? Oh, boy, Miles. He was yeah. on like, a, uh, say, Gascoigne level. Was he? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. At the time, we I'd never seen anything like him ever. Right. Just somebody who, and then we see him two years later, hungrier in the World Cup, <laughs> and he's running the bleeding games in the World Cup. And go, oh. and I'm glad that, it's not only exactly, me. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> he's doing that to load the Mateos. Yeah, he's not he's just doing it to me. Yeah. Yeah, I'm happy enough yeah. now, yeah. Yeah, I know, Pat was, I, 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 you meet Pat and oh, you couldn't footballer. meet a nicer man. Extraordinary footballer, as you say, very uh, humble man, but his talent. Was extraordinary as well. And again, Pat was one of those players, quite not Lajos de Terry, but on League of Ireland terms, certainly, absolutely, yeah. up there with the absolute greatest players who ever played the game yeah. in Ireland. And he, so he was letting you train at Shells and then yes. you were four years at 30. Yeah, and I was going up for like the home games, you'd have a couple on Saturday morning yeah. for training. And then you train on Saturday morning, you stay overnight and come back on Sunday. So you'd absolutely no social life whatsoever. Yeah. Then you're in for, into work on, at six o'clock on Monday morning. Yeah. And it was, um, it was tough going, but it Did was Did it affect it your working. game? Um, I don't think so. Um, Roy Coyle came in then and that year from, from Linfield to manage us and he was good decent as well and we finished second that year and uh, so he just came to me at the end of that season and said hey, John I think that's it we need somebody else now right how old were you then? I was 32 or 3 or something right. so no real problem I said no hassle with that and then Ray Tracy comes up and says I want to sign you for Rovers so right. I'll that ah, yeah. and how, how, how good was that feeling to come back? oh it was brilliant absolutely brilliant So I had the a, nomad years though yeah. oh yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, Talca Park. We were yeah, there. yeah. It was it was horrible. It was, it was I was just delighted to be back in Dublin playing for Rovers. I get where I played. Yeah. Um, so that was all really. Um, and how long did you have then your I second did, spell? I not, only one season. I got very sick that year. I remember I don't know what I got. An awful dose around Christmas time, and uh, just couldn't shake it. And it went on and on and on. So I was out for maybe a month and a half. Yeah. Just with a breathing thing and just a. A chesty cough and like a COVID almost yeah. pre before COVID was even heard of. You brought it, was you? Yeah, probably it is, yeah. <laughs> From my Wuhan fish market. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, I, um, yeah, so then when I came back in to play, it's like starting again, it's like pre season yeah. all over. You see, no chance. So, yeah. obviously, Ray at the end of that year said, Yeah, John, off you go. So, off we went to uh, to Monaghan, Billy Bags. <laughs> um, <laughs> Blue Rinse Brigade. Right. Myself and Mick were down there. Oh, Jesus, that was a great year, too. That was great fun. So at that, that, that time, then I was thinking, right, we're just winding down here yeah. now. So you're just drifting around clubs when, as you do. You know, when you get on the, uh, the League of Ireland roundabout, it's almost impossible to get off. You it. just start playing, yeah, don't you? Yeah. And, and then. Play for everyone. Well, it's and hard, does it? Because uh, uh, I, I, I understand, like, I got, I finished at 31, 32, and you. And you're like, will I go and play here? I play there. I know, I know. Do you regret that? I a little bit, yeah. I, I had a chance to go back to Drogheda. Yeah. And uh, uh, someone questioned something about me, and I just said, you know what, oh, you're all right. Biggest, I yeah. said, yeah, I was like, like I'd done a lot for the club. Yeah, and I you thought, had, indeed. And that sort of just put a dampener on, on football for me, because whatever about my ability, it was a character thing, and I thought, that's. And I just 
sour day with all the oh, stuff I know, and I yeah, just end yeah. up going you know what I, I don't want to go around and people going you know what he was brilliant when he was uh, 25 and he, yeah that. you know what I mean so I was you like to go somewhere else maybe just, yeah maybe but I just I, I just wanted to go right and then at that stage I caught the, maybe the coaching bug as well and I was starting to get into that yeah, and I, yeah. I was really enjoying it yeah. and then yeah, well, that's good, so it? it was that type of thing but you mm. caught that a little bit as well didn't you you started only, coaching only a little bit <laughs> I started uh, very small with um, a Leinster Senior League team after I finished playing and uh, St James Athletic, great bunch of lads, yeah. we played in some Saturday league, I don't, way down the divisions, but uh, I, knocked, I, ne I nearly enjoyed that more yeah. than anything else that I got because they were just knocking some crack out of these lads, they were so game, they were so honest, <laughs> yeah. they were just brilliant, yeah. like you'd say be up here for training, I'd have training deliberately in the middle of Champions League matches, they yeah. were stupid United matches yeah. or Liverpool matches, oh you know the match, yes I know the match, just be here or you're not playing, yeah. and I always came through when we promised yeah. so they knew I wasn't messing. So, yeah, oh, but I really enjoyed that. We won a league there. It was like we won the European Cup. It was absolutely brilliant. So we had great fun with that. And then Alan gave me the call for Longford. That was 2004. Yeah, Alan Matthews gave me a shout. Because, um, oh, what's his Aaron, name? Aaron, Aaron had gone at loan. Yeah. Yeah. So he said, will you come up and just just do whatever you do? Said, don't have to. I said, I'm not a great coach now. I'm not great on the field, but yeah. with flag posts and, and yeah. pounds. So he said, I'll come up anyway and see how it goes. So you went. By, you were talking about the Longford stuff in 04 and you came in. You were coaching. We loved you, like as players. <laughs> I, I touched on it earlier. We just They're loved being great, around. Great you. group. Yeah, really a group of lads. Um, but at that time, as you know, years are only, we were only part time. We were meant to be part time. Yeah, but we were meant to be. Yeah, but uh, and training to to chase the likes of shells and bows were full time. So you're training every day, and this for me now. I love football. Don't get me yeah. wrong. I don't love it that much because yeah. I was seeing you guys more than I was seeing my family that yeah. way. Like on a, a air days were Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, game Friday. Game Friday. Yeah, in possibly, one of the weekends. Yeah. In, if uh, the result didn't go well in Saturday, if it went well, you're in Sunday. Yeah. So it was just, a, it was the continuous pressure of training, 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 game, training, 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 game. I just, I just couldn't do it. Yeah. I just hands um, in up. fairness, we were probably under pressure as well, John, because yeah. we 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 had won the cup the year yes, before yeah. and got to the, the final of the league cup. Yeah. So there was actually pressure on us to be successful, successful again. Successful again, yeah. And that's that brings it for for a player, it's totally different pressure. Yeah. Whereas in management and how Alan Matthews did it for so long and still doing it to yeah. this day, I just have nothing but the height of admiration for any coach. I don't care who he is, what he's doing, if he's given up his time to coach people. He has my full like regard. <laughs> it's just tough. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. It, and even you see now, you see the youngsters coming in, Ado Price, Royster, yourself, all Pat those Flynn, lads. Yeah. It's just oh, it's a pleasure to see them coming in, all with a sense of what Rovers are, what they stand for, yeah. and all that. So it makes such a difference. And I do have. And then you see it last night with the three the three young lads coming oh, on, like Justin just, and Oidemo like, and Gideon. You almost feel like. Almost their parents. I don't know ah, why they feel that proud and but, ah, Boston, just proud, yeah. yeah. Like, just, but for the club, like that's yeah, the thing. Exactly. I, I, speaking to people today, and it's a club thing. It's like yeah. we've all, everyone's played a part everyone's on their journey. Touched, the, touched them at some stage on their way up, yeah. up the path. Exactly. And to see them blossoming now is just fun. And fingers crossed for another loody load of them <laughs> in the future. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's not last. stopping. That's yeah. the thing. It's yeah. a, that's the difference in in your area and and the, what's gone yeah, is yeah. that there's something underneath it now. Yeah. Where yeah. before, like your four in a row team, your team that was successful is McLaughlin leaves, he takes half the squad to Derry with him. <laughs> like, do you know what I mean? Yeah, you all move yeah, on, but yeah. what's left? Yeah. So if, if that happens where players want to move on from Rovers, there's more coming to yeah, step in. Yeah, for sure. And it looks like it doesn't matter what age you are now, there he is. Uh, Justin comes on, 17 years. Look, I didn't know my arse me I know when I was 17, to be fair. Absolutely a joy to behold. Yeah. He, just, just, I just said, and a, a man of the match award as well. Well, whoever dishes them, well, I know, never know. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's a business we're running. Yeah. <laughs> but that's the thing. Like, know, uh, like, we, amazing. The people who coached him, and I remember, like, we, me and a fellow trying to call his dad when he was 12 right, yeah. and 11 or 12 saying listen but I, I knew two years ago he can played you even, can you even see can you yeah, see them you at can, that age yeah. I, I just knew he had something about him that you play like so last night after the game I went, I'm going did you enjoy that he's like I loved it 
Like it's, I I knew he had yeah. that thing that he can handle playing in front of Rovers. Yeah. Like he'll because you said the Rovers fans are demanding. Oh. But he can handle yeah. that. Well, give me the ball again. Yeah, yeah. What you you doubt me? Give yeah. me it again. Yeah. And I've seen that in him. And Gideon has it in a different oh, way. Oh, Gideon's class, yeah. Gideon has it in a steely determination Well, way. obviously we've seen less of Gideon than we have, yeah. obviously, of Justin, but it looks like he just had bundles of uh, A, energy, <laughs> and B, confidence. Yeah. It's just, and Oidemo as well. But that different confidence. Yeah, yeah. R- real yeah. self-assured sure, confidence. Yeah. Where, G- where Justin's real, I'm going to show so, you confidence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. great. Kind of a leadership even. Yeah. At times. At 17. Yeah. I know. But oh, like, if only, if only we knew that. <laughs> <laughs> but your relationship with Rovers is is it means a lot to you, oh, okay? Huge. And because you you were coming to every game, even before obviously the recent success, I I yeah. see you down there. Yeah. Since obviously Stephen Bradley's come in and, and and the new management, you've been asked back a few times to present jerseys <laughs> and to to to, to the up and coming players mm. to let them know what it means to represent yeah. the club and yeah. play for Rovers. What does that mean to you and your family? Oh, it's huge. Like, uh, we're getting an invitation to come up at the start of the season, as you say, to present the jerseys. And um, it's, it's that still, what it means to me is the involvement. Yeah. That you still have a, an involvement with the day-to-day players. With the, and the players are the key to any club. Yeah. Let's face it, without the players you have nothing. But um, it's just that, that contact with them. And they know your name, and you get, and you see them in, during the season. How are you, John? How are you, yeah. whoever, Pico or whatever? And um, it's just having that affiliation as well. Yeah. Oh, it just means so much. And but and Stephen puts so much, uh, uh, puts an awful lot of uh, thought. Thought, even thought, and he puts a responsibility on the other players yeah. to say, "You see this player." He now yeah. again we don't think that of it. So it's yeah. He's won four leagues and three cups and blah 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 blah, yeah. whatever. But it's it is a way of showing new players what it means to be a part of the club, and I, th- I always think that the club just sh- should mean a lot more yeah. to people. But like the, I know Stephen picks the players, and some of them don't fit, and I'm sure that some of that's the reason yeah. because they don't get what Shamrock Rovers is about and yeah. what your responsibility is. And it's a huge responsibility, especially now, where you're part of that community in Tala. But you're not only pa- you're a, you're a role model for so many kids. Like yeah. There's millions of kids in Tallaght. It just seems to be and the and the and the I see the the kids coming to the matches now, just getting younger and younger and you and like trapped for life. Like yeah, like yeah. in my day that would have been a life of misery. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, they they don't, they just think like this, this is, is yeah. this is just the way this we qualify for Europe every year. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Turn into the group stage. Is that you? This is the but, business. But it's Stephen's way of shown. That's why he's remembered and that's why he's getting invited back because he knew what it meant. Yeah. He knew what it meant to play for the club yeah. and he was successful at it. Yeah. And you were and able to... Set across. Exactly. I remember I met him um, uh, at the Points disco after <laughs> after we won the league last yeah. year. And he was just, I was just chatting away to him for an hour just about that very thing. I mm. mean, like we're just about that, just about Rovers. It wasn't about any specifics yeah. or details. It was just what it meant to the present day players to recognise what the past had brought them, how yeah. we got to this juncture, how are there, how we've become such a successful team. Now it's been an awful lot of hard work that's oh, been yeah. put in over the last and pain 15. with the with the oh, with the an, with an the, awful lot yeah. of pain as well. Yeah. Uh, obviously the joys are much more joyful because of those downs and, yeah. and the pain that you went through to get there. So it's just and having that base is so important, isn't it? Incredible. Even the training base as it, well oh, as the went out to Roadstone. Oh yeah. my god. <laughs> how goes it? Oh. <laughs> yeah. And getting better, like the, yeah. the, oh, see all the plans, I new know. grass pitches and new artificial pitches and 4G and 5G or whatever, just amazing. Who would have ever that's, thought, but that's who, like, really, who would have ever thought back when uh, Tallow was a shell, rusting away uh, in, comp- in the courts against Thomas Davis or whoever it yeah. was, and you're thinking, oh Jesus, yeah. will we ever? I know. And now you get to this and you think, oh. The training ground and a fantastic stadium. Uh, beautiful training ground. And everyone should have it. Like, oh, listen, I'm, I'm proud. I'm, pr- I'm so proud of Rollstone yeah. because, like, we are, we are involved in it from the, the start yeah. of right. Let's go and can we build teams while we're building this? And, and in fairness to Stephen and Shane and Jonathan's yeah. been so heavily involved with the building the academy up. Yeah. And everybody, like you said, everybody's had a hand in it, yeah. and and that's where you're proud because, like, I, 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 I touched on this with other people. The amount of talent that had to leave Tala just to play football yeah. at a high level yeah. 
and that now you don't. You don't, yeah, exactly. That's that. That's that's why something like where they can drive by the stadium and go, I'm gonna play there. Yeah, absolutely. I'm gonna play there. Yeah, see yeah, that? I'm gonna play there. Yeah, and it's not beyond them. Yeah, and, and you, that's the bit. I, you have that, and it's the same as like the all the they go on about the English academies and the Ajax academies, and then now we're. Yeah. we're yeah. At that level. Yeah. Academy wise, yeah, I mean. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. Which is just phenomenal. And opinion. like you said, even the, the ex players coming in and coaching and, and inputting that into them and saying, right, yeah. this is how this is like you said, Joel's saying, listen, careful there. Yeah. You know, you know yeah. like yeah. small don't, little snippets. Yeah, don't 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 <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. But also then watch when he goes here, you can go here and there you know, they're little things that like as coaches you can do all that, but them small little snippets of you know how to get out in front as a defender, yeah. or you know showing them a certain way is so yeah, small little details. Yeah. Like, you know. Attention to detail, yeah. Gerto. That was one thing I did see when oh, I just went to Budapest to see uh, Rovers in front in Farring Forish, and their stadium is like it's a, it's a, it's just a bigger uh, version of Italia yeah. with the corners. Of what in. it could be with yeah. the corners in, yeah. and apparently there's a rumor going around here last night that they might be putting the corners in, which would be amazing. That's how you start. That's how rumors start on things like this. You know, is it right? With Shamrock rumors. <laughs> yeah, Shamrock rumors. <laughs> but um, I thought their attention to detail was extra. There was Rovers crests all over the place. Yeah. Like they had no fear of putting up the crest. They had a. I'm, I, I have a picture outside their bar. Actually, we walked past there. We didn't go in, yeah. but they had a, the Rovers crest on one side and the Farring Forward. Just yeah. Now it meant it meant nothing to them, but it meant an awful lot yeah. to us that we actually stopped and took a photo in yeah. front of it. You know, that, just little things like that. And in fairness, just, there, that's like you said, but that's why the European stuff is so important it's huge, because you're learning all the time. That's it. You're picking up how to run a, a, a football club as a business and an event exactly. Exactly. And how do you think the, with the current crop of Rovers players and the European adventure they've been on this year? What's your thought process behind what they've done, what they've achieved, and what 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 they can achieve as well? Yeah. Well, that's where we live in hope to win your four home matches in Europe. Yeah. <laughs> no. We yeah, could win one. <laughs> and you, like you said, you could, like to win four against and the opposition. I know, obviously, people say, "Ah, but." Unbelievable. Same to like about the opposition. The opposition are European standard. They won their leagues in their own countries. Yeah. So you have to. You, you can only deal with what you've, what you, uh, what you play against. Yeah. And Rovers are putting them all to the sword. So last night it was just terrific. It really was. But as you were saying, with the three youngsters starting, it just brings a. It's a the spark to didn't it? Areas, yeah. Then? And that's where I think Stephen deserves a lot of credit on that one. Yeah. Because he, he he sparked he, the he whole thing. To no fear is yeah. wrong to be in. Exactly. But, but you know the way some guys are thinking, yeah, you know. Big night. Yeah. Exactly. But they have they just they, they just seem to be just part of the party. But that's what the difference in coming into a, a good squad yeah. that can go. Yeah. Do you know what? Good pros behind them. Yeah. Stay there, go there, yeah. etc. Oh, well, that's huge as yeah, well. Ex- yeah, you experience that. So that, like you, like you, like you, and it nearly goes full circle. Like you were talking about the Joyles when they have. I'm not saying they have a Joyle, but they have a Jack Bourne or yeah, a, or, yeah. a, or oh, even a Grace good. going. Yeah, yeah. Like you had a Keeley going. Yeah, what are you doing? Absolutely. And Grace is saying yeah. to him here, yeah. back there, and he goes, all right. Yeah, and it's so thing. important. Yeah. But it, in a match situation Correct. and a particularly a big match, yeah. full house and talent, every all the eyes on you. Because and it's a quicker really, game. Oh, absolutely, and and a higher standard. Yeah. Obviously, they're going to be technically better. Than <laughs> and their awareness that we talked about. Oh, God, yeah. Yeah. But um, yeah, oh, it's just. But your it's group, been an your, run. your group of Mick, Mick Bourne, Pat Bourne, um, yourself. There's a few that come to all the events Harry and are, comes event yeah. occasionally. Yeah. What does it mean to you? What does it mean to that group that, like, you're all still very tight? Absolutely. You're, you're really close friends. Yes, you probably have a group together as well. Yeah. That what does it mean to you? Even the likes of coming up and chatting here, that your involvement. Yeah, I love it. I yeah. love it. And I know they, the lads love it as well. Because yeah. Pat used to come and present the jerseys as well at the yeah. start of the season with me. And it was a great uh, opportunity to catch up and see how he's doing. Because really, we don't, I, although when we meet, we have great fun and it's like just going back into the yeah, dressing room again. Yeah. But uh, we don't really socialise with each other until uh, Noel Larkin comes home from Australia. <laughs> right. And then he hits up in a big party and that's, yeah. that's grand. But uh, yeah, I know there's, well, there are two, I, I think both of them managed Rovers at one stage right, in their yeah. careers. So they would even have more reason to be, yeah. although I was always the supporter on the pitch and I think the supporters kind of latched onto that. They just, just have a soft spot for me. Yeah, even yeah. if I played the worst league the game in the, <laughs> in the board, uh, they'd say, oh, Jason, we're playing brilliant, yeah. Jason. Don't worry. 
Yeah, yeah so, you'll be great next week. Yeah, <laughs> and they're hugely supportive. Yeah. And I never had a, a minute's uh, trouble with them at all. They were just hugely uh, uh, supportive and encouraging. And oh, I couldn't do it. I couldn't put a foot wrong, to be honest. So oh, it was just amazing. But yeah, it's, it's huge to be still involved. Do you, uh, Angie knows uh, I go off on Friday nights or whatever the matches are. And just big smile on my face, and just great to be part yeah. of it. You go in waving at your old friends, and oh, do I see this? Do I see that? And I, I love all that, absolutely yeah. love it. And I can't give enough time to the club because what they're doing for me is huge and from the, a supporter's perspective. Obviously, we spoke about leaving the game or retiring. How did you find retiring, and, and has this sort of helped it? You know, because retiring is tough and something that you can't you can't relate that to other people unless you like i can relate me and you can relate to it yeah. because we've been through, through it. it yeah and that's why when you're around a group yeah. of players that have all retired you can go you have that you know what you went through was yeah. it tough retiring um, it's probably uh, easier for me Gert, though, in one respect that the fact that i was much older than you yeah because you were only a young man i yeah. wasn't even it wasn't, didn't even enter my mind i told you would yeah. i'd be retired anytime soon and as it turned out Five years later, I went on to win a league with Dundalk. That's right, yeah. Six, so it was different for me than you, I'd say, in that regard. Yeah. I didn't mind retiring. I knew my time would come. I was yeah. 37 years of age. Right. Everything was starting to creak. <laughs> <laughs> As it does, you can't catch the fella you think you can catch. You make a stupid You can tackle. catch him in your head, yeah. but you go, I yeah. know you're going to go there, but I still can't stop it. Yeah, you're making stupid tackles yeah. left, right and centre. So I didn't mind that. The thing I missed the most was... Um, was the camaraderie yeah. and the dressing room and yeah. the crack. Like, you know, yourself, you were the funniest man I've ever heard in the dressing room. <laughs> don't listen, don't, don't say that. <laughs> no, no, it was brilliant. Yeah. I loved yeah. I just loved that, all that stuff. Like, you'd hear me before you'd see you me. You would, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, you knew a few people like that. Yeah. But um, we had great fun. Like, you just go in it before training, you spend an hour laughing before yeah. training and an hour laughing yeah, after training. I used to love, I'd be like, <laughs> people go, why are you always early? Yeah. And I'd be like, because I love just sitting and... <laughs> yeah. Slagging yeah, people yeah. off left, right, And then I'd be like, why are you always last out to go? Because I just love sitting, yeah. yeah. And that, you're right, that's... Yeah, and that's the thing I miss the most. I didn't really miss the football, to be honest. Yeah. I think... Uh, the, Nearly broke my neck with my Hall of Medals, but that's the you know. <laughs> you must have put them on the arm, carrying them out. That's what happened. Um, listen, it's been great having you. I know you. Oh, so I was going to say you can ride off. I was going to say you can ride off into the sunset on your Harley. Yeah. Um, this is where we we finish the walk up here. Yeah. JC. So, uh, and the reason we do it about like this walk and getting to here is like you, you actually can see the whole of Tala, and you can see Tala Stadium. Oh yes, indeed. But well, you can see Rings End, which is the yeah, origins of the club and all that, and the journey through Milltown then to Tallis Stadium is just over there. You see behind these trees over here. Oh yeah, I see the, the yeah. apartments where we used to know. So, so that's well. where it is, and then you can see the see the roadstone actual building is over there. So that's where roadstone thing. Oh, so. the concrete thing. Yeah, oh, see. see, so yes. you can see it all as a. Yeah, as a vista. Yeah, and that's where we go. But you can't ride off into the sunset because I know you like motorbiking I as do. well. <laughs> Too much. <laughs> yeah, yeah, wild hogs is like. <laughs> but uh, I can't thank you enough. I've, oh, I've always loved your company. Great. Honestly, Absolutely. I genuinely always. Uh, you're, My pleasure. You're one of my favourite people, Thanks and I can't thank great. you enough. Brilliant, Thanks honestly. Much Thanks very much. That was great. great. Oh, Thanks brilliant. a million. Man. Thanks, bud.